folks, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at question 1570, dot product of two sparse vectors. The way we'll be approaching this problem is by actually creating um, a hash set for um, sparse vectors. So let's do that. Um, and the reason why we're creating a hash set is because they want us to um, do it efficiently, which would mean that there are a lot of zero values, which we don't really need to store all the time. So if you do a hash map, which stores the index and the, only the indices, which have a non-zero value, that would be saving a lot of space. So let's uh, do that. So each um, sparse vector would have a hash map of for itself. And, and the way you'd be initializing it is, um, as soon as you enter the constructor, you would you will initialize a hash map, and then you would put all the values uh, in the hash map if it's a non-zero value. So for int num in nums, um, let's do this int i equals zero. So this would be the index. If um, num is not equal to zero, um, hash dot put i and num and then you would increment i so what are you doing here right you're just initializing a hash for every single sparse vector and you're adding all the non-zero values into the map and the key for each of them is the um the index so what do you do with the dot product right so the first thing is actually the base case so if the size of either of this is zero you just return zero so how do you do that so you already have a hash so hash dot size, if it is equal to zero, or you should you should also check whether the the sparse vector that's given to us, which is back, hash dot back dot hash dot size. If it is equal to zero, you would just return zero. So what's exactly happening here? You're looking at the a given hash uh, that's in the class already, you're checking here if the size is zero, just return it as is. Or if the new sparse vector that's given to us, you're trying to access the hash of that particular sparse vector and you're checking the size is zero. If it is, you return zero. If not, you want to re return the result, right? So let's initialize res to be equal to zero. So for int um, num in hash dot key set, so what exactly are you doing here? You're saying, hey, you know what? Go over all of the values in the hash map, the key set, and if vec dot hash that contains key num. So what exactly are you doing here? You're iterating over all the indices in the hash map which have a non-zero value, right? And you're checking if um, the hash of the given uh, uh, sparse vector also has the same ind index. So what exactly does that mean? That means you're looking at two sparse uh, uh, vectors and you're checking, hey, if the indices, the current index that you're looking at, if they're not equal to zero in both the cases, that's when you actually need to multiply them and add that to the result. So basically you're checking, hey, you know what? This particular um, index, num index, has a non-zero value. That's the reason why it's actually in the hash map. And you're checking, hey, since this is not zero, can we multiply it by uh, the sparse vector, right? So what are you checking? Looking at the hash of the new sparse vector and checking if that uh, index exists as well. If it does, that means both of these um, indices are non-zero, so you can multiply them. So it would be res it would be equal to um, hash dot uh, hash dot get a num uh, and you're multiplying it. So it would be Vec dot hash dot get num. Awesome. So you just add that and then in the end you would return res. Awesome. So let's compile this and see if it's okay. Hmm. Yeah, okay. So the first case is okay. Everything else is okay as well. Awesome. So let's talk about the space and the time complexity. Um, the space complexity of the entire solution is of n since you are storing the values with the index and the corresponding values in the hash. And the space complexity for this function is of n since you are taking the time to go through all the values and add, add that to the hash map. Same goes here of n since you are taking all of the values and adding that uh, or calculating the, uh, the result. Awesome.
uh if you have any questions about the problem please let me know in the in the comments below don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video i would really appreciate that it definitely motivates me to make keep making more videos um thanks so much and i'll see you all in the next video peace